Hello everyone and welcome back to the Capablanca Saga. We are back at the Rice Memorial Tournament of 1916 played in New York and uh, Capablanca with the black pieces faces uh, David Janowski once again. And uh, uh, this is the second to last game we're going to show from this tournament. We're going to show one more and then we are heading into a different direction in our Capablanca Saga. And I know it might seem like we are uh, dealing with this Capablanca Saga for a bit too long. But if you remember prior to the Capablanca Saga we were covering the Bobby Fischer Saga. And it took us some, uh, I believe some five months to, to cover it. Even though we, we only covered the uh, uh, years 1970 to 1972. Just the Palma de Mallorca Interzonal the candidates matches of 1971 and then the 1972 uh, World Chess Championship match against Boris Paskis. So I don't, uh, I don't think it's, uh, it's too long, uh, but uh, you know we are not, we're not going to be here forever. So and it's going to stay, you know, on, on my channel for forever. So uh, we do have to finish it, and uh, I do hope you enjoy that. Uh, so without further ado, let's check out the game. Uh, Janowski has the white pieces, <clears throat> and he opens with d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, uh, knight to f3 by Janowski, d5, uh, c4, and now c6, uh, the, the semi-slav. Uh, we have knight to c3 by uh, Janowski and bishop to f5. There's been a lot of talk about bishop to g4 in this position, uh, but it leads to some of the crazy lines, and uh, I'm just going to show one that le that uh, uh, comes up uh, after knight to e5. Uh, attacking the bishop, and if the bishop retreats, let's say bishop to f5, now comes captures, captures, and e4. And here you have... Uh, so many options as white already bishop is uh, threatening to come to b5 uh, let's say after knight captures on e4 knight captures pawn captures now you go bishop to c4 already you're threatening checkmate with bishop captures on f7 and only after black blocks this with e6 preventing the bishop from controlling the d7 square now you give this check bishop b5 check and now uh, a lot of good things can happen uh, for example, if, if you block here, you just lose a piece, so you have to block with knight c6. And then after knight captures, you can't recapture because of bishop captures. You have to go queen d5 to attack the bishop here, but now just queen b3. And now you can either capture the queen, then capture the knight, and you will again lose a rook as it will be check. Or you can try a6, and after bishop to a4, again, you can try captures, captures, and then capture here you will again lose a rook or if you try b5 then just captures captures and bishop b3 uh, white uh, keeps the extra piece and of course will win the game easily so this is one of the reasons why not bishop to g4 but rather bishop to b uh, bishop to f5 by capablanca which is uh, usually not the case it's it's principled to put your piece uh, as deep into the position as possible but here it it just doesn't work uh, tactically uh, so queen b queen b3 and now queen to b6 and capablanca mentions that he feels he felt that uh, this was uh, very nice for black. Uh, he will go into a slightly worse endgame, but, uh, you know, black does have compensation with the semi-open A file. Uh, we have queen captures on B6, A captures on B6, captures on D5. We have knight captures on D5. Capablanca wants to trade even further. Knight captures, C captures, and now E3. And this is the position we've talked about. Uh, Janowski has a, an intact pawn structure. Well, Capablanca has a double B pawn, but he does have a semi-open file for his rook uh, to use as he pleases. Uh, so, okay, knight to C6. We have bishop to D2, and now a very exciting move by Capablanca. Uh, bishop to D7. I know it doesn't look like a very exciting move, but it actually is when you hear Capablanca's explanation. Uh, he wants to keep control of the B5 square as white's bishop also controls b5 he wants to push his doubled pawn to b5 so he wants his bishop to defend this then he wants to go knight a5 and put this knight all the way to c4 and uh, white will not be able to prevent this by playing b3 because then the knight will have uh, sorry by playing a3 uh, because then the knight will have a nice uh, outpost on, on b3 and also after the knight comes to c4 white will have to give up the light square bishop and only then will capablanca get this pawn all the way to c4 c4 so this is Capablanca. Blanca's plan. Uh, we'll see how he executes it. Uh, we have bishop to e2 and now comes e6. The dark square bishop is ready to be developed. We have castles uh, and now bishop to d6. Uh, rook f to c1, grabbing hold of the only open file on the board. Uh, we have king to e7. Castling is also possible, but um, you know, it's the end game. You want your king uh, in the center of the board, not uh, not somewhere on the king side doing nothing. Uh, we have bishop to c3, and now comes rook h to c8. Capablanca also takes control of the open c file. Uh, we have a3 by white, and now comes knight to a5. So here, 
uh, you can see that uh, Capablanca's plan is uh, moving forward. B5 is the plan, knight to C4 is the plan, and uh, you do want to prevent knight to B3, which would win material, so knight to D2. Uh, and here, Capablanca uh, doesn't rush with B5. First, uh, he goes F5. Uh, we have g3. He's not worried about b4. If you try b4 to kick it away, even though you don't have b5, Capablanca would still go knight c4. And now after knight captures, you would capture with the d-pawn, and now this bishop wouldn't really be all that impressive. Bishop f3, just rook to a7, and now it's, uh, well, you have a backwards a-pawn, b5 is coming, this rook is coming to a8, you're gonna bust, op uh, bust open the queen side, and uh, you're gonna play there with the black pieces. Uh, so, after f5, uh, we have g3 by Janowski, and only now b5. Does Capablanca continue with his plan that started with bishop to d7? Uh, we have f3, preparing e4 at some point, and now comes knight to c4. And now, uh, the b-pawn is under attack, you don't want to do something like b3, the knight can even capture on a3. So, here, uh, you could capture with the knight, but then, again, you get this position, and, well, with this pawn structure, uh, the light square bishop isn't gonna be of much use. So, uh, Janowski decides to capture with the bishop. Uh, we have bishop captures, b captures on c4, and now e4. A nice principled move. Uh, we have king to f7 by Capablanca, and now uh, you have a choice here. Either you capture here, and then play f4, and then bring the rook over to e1. You can exchange both uh, both pairs of rooks, and try to play this bishop and the knight against two bishops, or you can play the way Janowski played in the game, e5. He closes the center, and he says, uh, okay, Capablanca, you don't have nothing here. Uh, you don't have anything here. Uh, I'm very happy with a draw with the white pieces. And uh, this is sometimes a problem, as Capablanca is the favorite here. Everyone knows that. But still, if you have the black, if you have the white pieces, you should uh, always strive to to achieve something. You should do that with the black pieces as well, but especially with the white pieces. Uh, with b5 by Capablanca, uh, his idea is rook to a4, bring the other rook over to a8, and then if white doesn't react, even push b4, uh, as uh, there will be a lot of pressure <coughs> uh, along, along the a line. Sorry about that. <coughs> uh, we have king to f2 by Janowski, and now comes rook to a4, uh, as planned. Uh, king to e3, uh, with rook c to a8, and now comes rook a to b1. Now, if white isn't careful, b4 is coming, and you will not be able to capture a capture some b4 because of the pressure along the a file. So, rook a to b1, and now comes h6, just preparing g5. Uh, we have knight to f3, and Capablanca goes g5 nonetheless. His idea is if captures, captures, uh, and h4, he wants to go g4, and then transfer the rooks over to the g side and play there. Uh, Janowski doesn't allow this, he goes knight to e1. Just waiting to see if Capablanca will capture or, or uh, push all the way to g4. Uh, but Capablanca first transfers the rooks over to the king side. We have rook to g8. Uh, now comes king to f3, and now g captures on f4. g captures on f4, and now rook a to a8. Now this rook uh, has plans of going to g4, and then the rooks will be doubled along the g file. And here, you could go for knight to c2, then the knight can come uh, to e3, you can go rook g1. Uh, but uh, Janowski tries a different idea. He goes knight to g2, uh, and Capablanca just continues, rook to g4. And, uh, well, the best course for white now would be rook to h1, actually. And then after rook a to g8, go knight e3, kick away this rook, rook to g6, and then the game simply continues. Black would be better, uh, but the game continues. Here we had a different uh, plan. Rook to g1 by Janowski. And, okay, you do defend the knight, but uh, after Capablanca's rook a to g8, which was played in the game, you no longer have the option of moving the knight, as you would lose the rook on g1. Uh, so, bishop to e1. Uh, with ideas of blocking the, the rook pair uh, with bishop to g3. Uh, with uh, b4 <coughs> by black, Capablanca sacrifices a pawn uh, with uh, plans of activating the bishop with bishop to a4 and c2. Uh, it doesn't matter if black white recaptures with the bishop or with the pawn, the idea is the same. Uh, we have a captures on b4, bishop to a4 now going for c2, and now rook to a1. Uh, bishop to c2, going for e4, and now you can see that the rooks are attacking the knight here, and because the knight cannot move, that makes this bishop to e4 check a real problem for white. Uh, so, bishop to g3 blocking, but it doesn't help white all that much. Capablanca goes bishop to e4 check, king to f2, and now h5. Now the plan is h4, uh, which would force the bishop to move, either, either win the bishop or force it to move, and then win the knight uh, on g2. So, uh, here you have an option. You can go knight e3, 
Uh, but then Capablanca's idea is the same. Capablanca's just gonna go h4. And after knight captures on g4, you would play pawn captures with check, rook captures, and now you would only capture here. The pawn is defended, and Capablanca would have two bishops for a rook, which is, of course, much better for black. So, uh, after this h5 move, uh, Janowski finds a different plan. He plays rook to a7. He pins the bishop and has hopes of attacking the pinned piece with bishop to h4. Uh, but Capablanca calculates properly. Bishop captures on g2, we have rook captures on g2, and now... Uh, of course, h4. Uh, and here you have the option. But uh, the problem is after rook captures uh, on e7, if this was Janowski's idea, uh, king captures and bishop to h4 check, Capablanca will not recapture here on h4. He's just going to move the king, king f7 or king e8. Uh, of course, you want to go to a light square. And uh, now... Uh, he's just done the exchange and he will have a much worse endgame if rook g2. Uh, Capablanca can just transfer uh, his rooks over here and start winning, uh, picking up the uh, the queenside pawns. So after h4, we have bishop captures on h4, just attacking the pin piece, uh, but rook captures on g2 with check. Uh, king to f3 and now rook captures on h2. Uh, just uh, rook uh, here is not possible because king captures rook, so you have to move the rook away from the king. Now comes bishop captures on e7, white is only down the exchange now, and rook to h3 check. King f2, and now rook to b3. So, uh, both of Capablanca's rooks are on light squares, there, uh, and all of the pawns are on light squares, so there are no uh, uh, good discoveries, or, or any nasty discoveries. Bishop to g5 was played, now comes king to g6, and now rook to e7, going for the e6 pawn, uh, but black is faster here. Rook captures on b2 check, king to f3, uh, and now comes rook to a8, uh, just going for this check and mate idea. Uh, here rook captures on e6 was played, Capablanca moved away, just king to h7, and it was in this position that uh, David Janowski resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Well, after a few checks, let's say rook e7 check, king g6, rook e6 check, king f7, or king g7, uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, bishop f6 check, king f7 attacking the rook, rook e7 check, king f8, there are no more good checks available for white, you will have to move, otherwise you're gonna get checkmated uh, here, and then, well, that's uh, the pawn is covering both e4 and g4 square, you'd have to move the king, but then just rook to a3 check, king would have to move, and then rook to g2, and here there are no good moves for white, if you move the king, uh, then comes, well, <clears throat> you could try this, but then just check, you have to block, and then you will lose the bishop here, and, uh, and well, pretty much any other uh, sequence loses for, uh, for, uh, for white as well. Uh, but yeah, it's a really an interesting game, and it really shows what happens when you play against a, a stronger opponent. Uh, he has the black pieces, and you're satisfied with a draw from the start. You choose a, a line that doesn't really offer white all that much, and you hope that by blocking everything, you will just force black to, to accept a draw. But black, uh, well, Capulanca tried, he, he pushed, he opened lines, and in the end, he prevailed. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, this was an interesting moment. Let me just uh, check here. After this f4 move, when when I said that uh, after this e4 move and king f7, that uh, Janowski had an option of captures, captures, and then maybe playing along the e file, uh, he rather decided to to push the e5 pawn and then close the position with f4. But now, if you if you look at the pawn structure here, all the pawns are on dark squares, and also he has a dark square bishop on c3, uh, which is basically a pawn. If I didn't tell you it was a bishop you might have mistaken it for a pawn as it's basically <clears throat> uh, part of the pawn chain so not something not something you want to have uh, but yeah a very nice game and uh, a very nice end game uh, skill uh, demonstrated by Capablanca so I do hope you enjoyed that as well and sorry about me coughing I have no idea wh why why my uh, throat is sore uh, really no idea uh, and I haven't prepared my water so you know the, the jokes on me uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. Like I said, we will show one more game from the Rice Tournament of uh, New York in 1916, and then we are moving forward with the Capablanca saga. Not really sure if we're uh, striking with, uh, to the Alaska versus Capablanca World Chess Championship match, or we're going to check something uh, other than that before that, but uh, I I'm going to decide on that tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, uh, I would like to thank Rolf Menk, Max Steiner, Jeff Graves, uh, Bernard Lu, and Irina Sanamo for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Most likely continuing the Capablanca saga, but if anything important happens in the world, we're, we're going to show that as well. And of course, uh, I'm going to check up on your suggestions. And also, uh, if you're new to this channel or new to the Capablanca saga, the, the, there will be a link in the description below. The first thing you will see 
will be a link that takes you to all the videos that we've uh, made so far in the Capablanca saga. So I do hope you enjoy that if you're more interested in, in learning about Jose Ruel Capablanca. So yeah, once again, thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your Saturday or Friday. Is it Friday? <laughs> uh, have an excellent rest of your Friday.